Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again. Um, and to, to start with, uh, let me go ahead and intro this music, and very sorry if this is going to be too distracting, but it's, this is the kind of music that I've been listening to all night. Um, I have played stuff like this before, but it never really thought much of it afterwards. But, um, after listening to this, I freaking love this stuff. It's kind of a cross between Dungeon Synth and Vaporwave, like two of my all-time favorite music genres. So, but at least that's the impression I get with this kind of music. So, let me go ahead and uh, fire her up. Oh, 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 oh. The, the title is going to be, uh, like, Dottengraft and their Action, Action Trek album. So, yeah, I, definitely German music here. I mean, you got songs like, Ech, right day, Beyond Macht. You know, that kind of thing. So, so let me go ahead and fire this up. Oh, and yeah, there is going to be animation in this, so it's going to jack up the file size a bit. Um, but otherwise, to start with, that's pretty much all I've been doing all night. All night and um, all this morning. Um, why? Well... Uh, I had a I had a call in yesterday. I uh, started my stream in the afternoon. Uh, about 45 minutes in, I just went. <sighs> just all of a sudden, out of the blue. Um, I mean, technically, I didn't sleep that great. I got a total of like five hours. Um, I got a it got interrupted by a my neighbor below me just. Just while pounding underneath me, probably like trying to hang up the poster or something. So, you know, I got interrupted by that, laid back down. But anyway, um, you know, I have to do something here. I totally forgot to do it before I started this cast, so I need to get it resolved right now. Off to a good start. So, but yeah, um, but, but yeah, I started up, but after, sometime after I killed the stream, uh, I had a, I started getting sinus problems, and then some point later on, I started developing a cough, um, uh, but, but now, my cough is all but gone, but, I mean, still got the sinus problems, um, I think, uh, I think I took two or three naps too, but it wasn't, again, I think it was more illness related than anything. But uh, otherwise, otherwise for the stream, just did my usual wind jammers too. This is gotta be one of my all-time favorite fighting games right here and yes I I talked about this before in another cast I do consider this game a fighting game I mean it's two play you know two players being pitted against each other um, you know with well uh, with one common you know with the goal being to defeat each other I mean it plays kind of like tennis if you know if you can envision that like one-on-one -on -one. You know, so, I mean, in my mind, close enough. I mean, it was the same thing I've said about, uh, I've said about jazz music. I mean, some, I mean, my favorite jazz album is, uh, Diggable Planets. Their Reaching album. But, uh, there's people out there that would hear it and go, This isn't jazz. Yeah, and that's also not the 1930s either, buddy. I mean, you know, or it was, it's the early 90s, or when that, uh, when the, you know, when that music first came out. 
But I think, uh, I just remember too, I think, I think, uh, Miles Davis was complaining about the same thing too. You know, it's like all these old jazz musicians. I mean, they're all stingy as fuck. I think that was his exact words too. They all, you know, they're all into museum jazz. They think, you know, I think jazz should, should just be placed in a museum and totally pervert, preserved in that form forever. You know, it shouldn't evolve. It shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't adapt or, you know, it shouldn't change its form. You know, he, he, he also said too that uh, even jazz itself was just a mixture of different styles. It didn't just, it didn't just magically appear in a vacuum. I mean, again, jazz was like bluegrass and blues. I think that was uh, two of them that created, uh, created, yeah, created jazz music. You know, so, um, so like I said, though, you know, Windjammers, it, I do consider it a fighting game. So, but yeah, I've been just been playing that almost every day for got to be at least a week now. And then, um, Another thing, um, another thing I did do is, um, I went ahead and, uh, I installed Guilty Gear Strive. Now, those, for those that don't know, I had problems with this before. I tried streaming it, but the thing of it is, is my computer can't handle it. But, uh, it just, I realized, I noticed that, um, I never, uh, I never actually got a refund on this game. I think I kept it for posterity or as a good just in case, so I figured, you know, since uh, I cleared up a whole bunch of space on my computer, I have about three, 350 gigabytes uh, of empty hard drive space, so I figured, eh, why not? So, went ahead and uh, downloaded it, and uh, I'll probably end up streaming it today. And after I do my usual, I'll play with Jammers 2 for a while, and then I'll probably switch over to Guilty Gear Strive. It just, I was, uh, I was starting to miss it. Plus, uh, I had, I mean, for a while, I mean, I was playing Guilty Gear Rev 2. It's, I think it's the game that came out previously, before Strive did. So, it just, it was kind of, it was kind of having me curious. You know, I wanted to see what, uh, I want to see the differences between Strive and Rev 2. So, like I said, that's, that's what I got going for today's stream. And, yeah, I am... I forgot to say this at the start of this cast, but uh, I'm thinking this is probably going to be a short, uh, it's going to be a fairly short one. Unlike my previous ones, they've gone anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes, so. Oh, I absolutely love that drum machine. I love the beats on this. Then, um, another thing I did, and yeah, bit of a goof, I'll go on. Um, okay, yeah, I kind of goofed that up. You guys can hardly see it. Okay, um, I also watched another really good video. Um, the old and controversial philosophy of fighting game arcades. Um, STSFN. That's um, an acronym for Save That Shit for Nationals. Basically, it referred to the practice of hoarding knowledge. Like, um, especially when it comes to like high-level competitive fighting gameplay. People wouldn't, uh, people wouldn't give away their trade secrets. You know, they wouldn't show, they wouldn't show like total strangers all the knowledge they learned because again, they're trying to save, they're trying to save their, their skills and ideas for, uh, for like Japanese opponents or again, when they're in a, they're saving their ability for tournaments. 
So if you the if you the normie player ever went up against these guys, uh, you wouldn't be fighting their final form. You'd be fighting a suppressed version of themselves. Now, uh, I'm really I'm definitely speaking off the cuff here, so I might I might be backing myself into a corner. I might not be talking any sense at all, but um, in a way, I can kind of relate relate to this when playing MMOs because it was a little there's a lot of bad practice going on like if, uh, if you're running a dungeon with a bunch of other guys and if you've never been in that dungeon before you have no idea what's going on you know instead of these uh you know then you 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 fight a boss or you fight an encounter and you end up dying in the process because of a mechanic or something that you didn't know about I mean it's your first time there so you you can't be a 100% expert on this the moment you the moment you enter the door. I mean, and I've said this before, and I'm, lots of other people have said this throughout my life too. We could sit here and we could educate the shit out of you until we turn blue in the face. You're gonna forget at least half of it when you get into the dungeon. So you know, we've just we pretty much wasted our words. You know, again, that's true in real life too. I mean, it's called information overload, and I've gone through a lot of it, all the lot of in a lot of the jobs I've worked. You know, we've had I've had managers do it to me. I, I've accidentally done it to other play, uh, players, done it to other people. You just you tell them way more than they needed to know, and, and because of that, they end up forgetting a good chunk of it. So, but then fast forward to like. Hang on, I think I lost my train of thought here. But, uh, you know, we would, uh, you know, I'd, I'd hop into a dungeon. My first, you know, that's what I was trying to say. You're going to have to do the content at some point. So, you, I mean, no, I mean, no amount of information overload is going to help you. Just tell you the basics tell you what you need to know in fact now that I think about it I actually did a cast video on this or I did this in one of my cast videos talking about tutorials just tell me the basic shit of what I need to know I'll figure it out from there if I need if I need a refresher or if I need to learn if I need a specific answer to a specific question then I'll come on back to the tutorial and I'll look it up but you know until then just keep it basic and keep it fundamental So, but apparently, you know, a lot of these people that I've ran dungeons with, if it's my first time there, a lot of times they get pissy. You know, it seems they also have that save that shit for nationals mentality. You know, they won't sit here and explain a boss to me. You know, or in a basic term, look, here, I'll put a raid icon over my head. Just whenever the boss looks like, if it looks like the boss is about to do something, just follow me. I know where to go. I can't recall a single time when anyone's ever done that. Usually, you know, I'll say, first time here, oh, okay, it's about the most I get. But nobody, you know, nobody really explains anything. Then we make it to the boss and it's, don't die, or, or, watch out, or, watch out for puddles. You know, and then there's like the opposite of the spectrum, you know, when, when they when they do try to tell me just what I need to know, they're actually too vague about it. You know, it's you know, don't fall off or you die, or watch out for fire, it'll kill you. But, you know, this doesn't really help much. Say so something like that. You know, you know. Again, like I said a few moments ago, here, here, I'm gonna put a raid. I'm gonna put an icon on top of my head here. Just follow me. I know where to go. They don't even, they don't even do that. It, again, it's, you know, to save that shit for nationals that, you know, that's in fighting games, I also see it in MMOs. It's like, it's like they don't want to, they don't want to show you what to do. Or if they do, they're, they can't, they don't do it right. So. But yeah, and, and it's also, this, after watching this video it was also, this is another reason why, uh, at least as far as 
these days, why I'm starting to like fighting games more than I am anything else. Because I know the, the times that I stream fighting games, uh, players, you know, viewers and players come on and give me information overload. This is something that I don't recall ever happening when I was streaming Final Fantasy XIV. You know, and, and for the times that I say, hey, first time in this dungeon, again, nobody says a word. Or if they do, the instructions don't help. It's, don't die. Well, oh, golly wally, gee, thanks, man. Well, that helped a bunch. Like, no fucking shit, Sherlock. You know, so... You know, but again, in, in fighting... <laughs> I mean, fighting games, I gotta... In fact, I just... I just remembered, I think it was a, a week and a half or two weeks ago, when I was streaming Killer Instinct. Apparently this guy was a tournament pro. Um, Uncle Scar Scar, I think his name was. Um, he goes on, gives a bit of advice here and there, and then he says something like, All right, man, you have my, like, you have my time and undivided attention for 15 minutes until I have to go to a tournament. I have never heard this before. Usually... You know, they'll hang on or they'll lurk or something. You know, back uh, back when I played Fantasy Strike. You know, I had I had pro players on there. They'd, they'd give me tips, but then... You wouldn't hear anything from them. I mean, I mean you, know, you know, they're lurking and watching, but... None of these guys have ever said anything like, Alright, man, you have my time for 15 minutes. Like, oh, damn. Like, you know, like a... Like a pocket teacher. You know, something like that. Like a pocket mentor. I think, um... I can't remember if, um... I can't remember if Screw, Joke, um... Demon, Bear Razor. I can't remember if they ever said anything like that when I was on, uh, Gems of War. I mean, they were, I mean, they were there helping me out, to be sure. But yeah, any, anyway, yeah, going back to what I was saying. Um, oh. And uh, I did forget to mention that, um, I did play a little bit of Gems of War as well. Um, I did, um, uh, I worked on what's called a bounty but uh after looking at some of the it, it's really hard it's really hard to explain without actually loading up the game and having to show you but even then um the bounty ended a few hours ago so I can't wouldn't be able to get to it but it's uh it's one of those game modes where they're just nice normal battles you know they start out super easy but gradually they get harder and harder. Monsters get tougher and tougher. Um, but you have to... You're sort of kind of restricted to using uh, characters that are called bounty hunters. I mean, you can still use any character you want, but you won't get as much points. Um, I went that route. Just, I went with uh, my usual default team. That way, so I could just... I could just breeze on through it a hell of a lot quicker. Um, I looked up, uh, there's a couple YouTubers. They posted up a couple groups of their own, but I I think I tried one of them one time. And the shit was just taking way too long. And uh, I actually ended up uh, losing two of my characters. So, uh, the ones that were given the advice had already played the game for so long. All their characters are maxed out and so popular. I had totally forgotten about that at the time, but again, I found it faster to just go in with my own default group, like none of the bounty hunters. Um, I, personally, I found it, a, I found it akin to rummaging through a junkyard to build a Ford Pinnell. Like when I actually tried to create my own bounty hunter group, it, it just, I couldn't find anything that really meshed. Okay, but um, but that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good. I've said all the things that I wanted to say this morning. So, 
But otherwise, no. Thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. Always appreciated. And I uh, hope the music wasn't too distracting. But like I said, this is... I freaking fell in love with this music the moment I started hearing it. So, it's all I've been listening to. So, But but otherwise, um, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, But until then, thanks again for coming around. And see you all next time. Bye for now.